Why do we need to love the strangers? Because we are strangers. God reminds the Israelites in Exodus chapter 22, He says, Do not mistreat or depress a foreigner, for you were foreigners in Egypt. Do not take advantage of the widow or the fatherless. Again, those without legal protection and in danger of ex exploitation. He says, he continues, God's language is strong here, if you do take advantage of them, and they cry out to me, I will certainly hear their cry. My anger will be aroused, and I will kill you with the sword. Your wives will become widows and your children fatherless. Wow, that's strong language. But why does he want them to care for them? Because we too are strangers. We are aliens. And so were the Israelites when they were oppressed in Egypt. First Peter, he writes to there at the beginning, to God's elect, exiles throughout the scattered provinces. We are aliens of this world, and so as aliens that live in this world, we need to extend hospitality to others. All these things are about adopting a way of life that is of Christ and not of the world. Hospitality is the process by which Jesus would create his new society. And we have to learn to open our lives to other people, and especially to the stranger, the one whom we may fear. So to conclude, I want to offer up four steps. These are steps in the conversation that I've wrestled with in my own life as I've considered this particular context that we're in. You see, in the Middle East, we, uh, they had the ceremonial foot washing to, to show when you are a stranger or a, an honored guest versus a stranger. We don't do that today. So what are the things that we can do to help welcome in and honor the stranger as our guests? What if we listened? See, listening is a profound way in receiving someone as a guest. Can you listen to someone? Really listen to them. Can we listen to each other's stories before we make assumptions about each other's lives? Can we hear the customs and traditions that have shaped each one of us before we assume that what is done is wrong just because it is different? Can we stop talking about ourselves enough to hear each other's concerns and worries, dreams, and goals? Can we listen before we assume someone that thinks and acts a certain way just because of the color of their skin or even their professed religion? I remember a time where I was uh, traveling just a year ago with my daughter Adeline, who many of you have heard already this morning as she rooted Elmo on during communion. Um, she is very spirited and she knows no strangers. And I'm trying to figure out how to teach her not to just go sit in everybody's lap. But uh, I was traveling with her to Texas to join Whitney. and She was already there, and I braved the journey on an airplane with my one-year-old daughter. And uh, I sat on an airplane <clears throat> as I was leaving Chattanooga, and I was a little two-seater aisle there, and, I, and my seat was on the aisle, and there was a, a woman seated next to me. She was clearly of Middle Eastern descent. And, uh, and I had all intentions and in just keeping focused on taking care of Adeline and not really conversing with anybody around me. Adeline had different intentions. See, Adeline saw the woman's phone, and she proceeded to grab her phone and go straight for her mouth with it. So, of course, I stopped her quickly, took the phone, handed it back to the woman and said, I'm so sorry, she just, she just likes phones. And the, the lady laughed. And as soon as she laughed, Adeline jumped into her lap. She landed there in her lap and proceeded to stay in her lap the entire flight to Dallas, two hours. So I was forced by my daughter to now engage into conversation with this now stranger that was holding her. Come to find out her name was Rebecca. She was a Muslim woman. Uh, she uh, was finishing up her Ph.D. at Boston College where she was uh, looking to be a neuroscientist. She wanted to be a neuroscientist because her mother uh, had died from a neurological disease, and she wanted to be a part of the research team that would help reverse that disease so that others wouldn't go through the same pain that she did. She was Muslim. Did I have any business listening to her? 
You see, our media likes to project stereotypes on us that everybody thinks the same way, even if they're of the same religion or same race, and that's just simply not true. And so I try to keep Rebecca's face in mind when I see the things that go out on the television that keep telling me to hate my stranger, to hate the one that's different. Or I think of my friend Dr. Muhammad, who was a Muslim dentist that lived in Soweizi, Zambia, that would leave his comfortable home and come and join us in a medical clinic every year to provide care for my Zambian brothers and sisters who had toothaches. You see, until we have, until we take people of other races into our hearts, we'll not recognize them as real human beings. Until we have loved a gay person, we will fear a gay person. Until we get to know someone who practices a different religion than our own, our differences will divide us. The walls only come down when the labels are changed into human faces. And this happens by listening to people. Really listening. Hospitable listening is accepting one that is talking. Not thinking about rebuttals if a guest says something that's different than what you think. It's not thinking about ways to solve the person's problem. Hospitable listening, listening is allowing your full attention to be on them as a gift, as your honored guest, not as the stranger. Where they feel acceptance no matter what they've told you. Now don't misunderstand me, I'm not talking about tolerance. I'm talking about loving acceptance that listens compassionately and being attentive to the life of your guest. So that's one thing. Let, let us consider listening, especially as we look at inviting new people within our own family that will be different than us. There are people within this room that are already different than us. Can we listen to each other? Can we learn about each other? Can we appreciate each other and honor each other as, in a hospitable way? Number two, uh, sacrifice something. Sacrifice is required to provide care for the stranger. We see this with Abraham. We may have to sacrifice a tradition. Maybe it's a personal value. Maybe it's a comfort zone. Maybe it's time. Like Chris said a few weeks ago, maybe it's your pew or parking spot. We have to be willing to sacrifice something to show care to the stranger, to open up our lives to others. This reminds me of a story of my wife's grandmother who's now passed away, but uh, several years ago in Abilene, she invited me and my uncle and his family over to her home. She frequently had people in her home for lunch after church on Sunday. And my uncle's family, uh, he has two boys, and they both were raised in the bush of Africa. Uh, my youngest cousin, Bryson, was just uh, maybe five years old at the time. And imagine coming into a, a grandmother's home full of nice ceramic breakable things when you're a boy that's raised in the bush of Africa where you swing from trees and play in the dirt. So he walks in and he sees uh, there on the counter this ceramic figurine that's there and he thinks, wow, that is interesting. He runs over to it and grabs it and in all the excitement he drops it and it shatters on the floor. <laughs> and my wife's grandmother walks over to Bryson and takes the ceramic figurine that was sitting next to that one and slams it on the floor and it shatters into pieces. And she leans down and hugs the little child and says, don't worry, that's just a thing. You're more important than that. Can we sacrifice things? Can we sacrifice things to be hospitable to people? Number three, don't always be the host, and don't always be the guest. Uh, Jesus was both host, both, both host and guest in his time on this earth. He fed the thousands. He was the host in the upper room, but he was the guest in the, to, to the woman that came and washed his feet. Uh, he requires his disciples to be both as well. Uh, he sends out in Luke 10, 72, and he sends them with min minimal things into the villages surrounding there. And he says, go and receive the hospitality of those within those villages. 
He says there's value in not always being the host where you can control the setting. There's value in also being the guest where you can enter into the setting of others and show them dignity and give them the opportunity to honor you. There's humility in that action. As we think about not always being the host and not always being the guest, prepare in your minds over the next few weeks as we receive new people within this family. Prepare times where you can be a host to someone who is different, someone new that you don't know. And then prepare times for which you can be the guest and receive the hospitality of others. Lastly, and I, don't, and I list this last, but really it's of first importance. We need to repent, right? Calvin's already convinced us of that this morning. We need to repent from prejudices. Repent from being in too big of a hurry to listen. Repent from only being focused on self-preservation instead of preserving the dignity of others. Repenting is not walking away with guilt, and that's not my intention this morning. See, guilt is synonymous with fear, and fear is the enemy of love, and hospitality, Christian hospitality, cannot be motivated by guilt and fear. It must be motivated by love. So when I say repent from these things, I'm simply extending the same invitation that Jesus extends to all of us. Turn around. Turn away from the way the world tells us to think about the neighbor, to think about the stranger. Turn around and imagine what the kingdom of God would be like if instead we feared each other, we loved each other. Instead of racing by in our own worlds, we stop and listen. We invite people into our lives. See, repenting is a way of preparing ourselves to receive the stranger. But only you know what you need to do to make that happen. Is there someone to forgive? Is there someone to release? Is there a fear to abandon? Is there an attitude that needs to be adjusted? We all have weapons that we must lay down before we can open up our hearts to each other. So where do we start from here? How do we become hospitable people? We start today. We start this very day because the way we spend our days will be the way that we live our lives. And so look for ways that you can be hospitable to those that are the strangers that are around you. And give them your time, give them your love, and receive in return a blessing that will be from God. Whatever your needs this morning, we ask that you will come. And let's together follow this vision that our elders have laid out for us to be a unified, diverse, multicultural congregation that will extend hospitality to each other. Let's stand and sing. Break my heart, dear Lord, tear the barriers down, show me in convicting tears the glories of your
quick announcement, uh, a way that we can extend hospitality to our community is coming up uh, December 20th. Uh, we are participating with the uh, Youth and Family Development Department of Chattanooga uh, to uh, be a big load site in their uh, commodities distribution event. And four times a year, the, the state will send, the government will send uh, commodities to help those that uh, there are in need. Uh, we have been chosen to represent this community, the East Brainerd community, uh, to be the distribution center for those that live in our area. These are literally our neighbors. And so over the last few uh, weeks and months, we have been receiving people coming into our office, uh, signing up for this. They have to uh, fill out a sheet that, where they are approved by the Youth and Family Development Department. And so we have a list of about 60 families uh, that live within our area that uh, are in need of commodities that will come on December 20th to pick those up. Um, now, the way that this has been done in other places is that uh, people will kind of come through like drive through at McDonald's where they have the bags and they stay in their car and you stick the bags in the car and then they continue on. But we're going to take the opportunity uh, to try to get to know our neighbors. And so uh, James Gilbert and his team will be providing a breakfast uh, for this time between 10 and 12, and uh, we'll have a chance to not only extend uh, some service uh, to those within our community, but also sit across the table from them and get to know them. And the neat thing about this is that uh, they will at least come back here four times a year for their commodities, but this gives us an opportunity to, uh, to extend so much more than a bag of groceries. It gives us an opportunity to extend a listening ear as we listen to the stories of our, of our neighbors. And so we're looking for people to volunteer. Obviously, we don't need the whole church for this. That might be overwhelming. Um, we have 700 people show up. Uh, but we have 60 families. We, we'd like to have uh, you know, 20 to 40 people come to help welcome these families, to sit and eat with them, to help distribute the bags. Um, and so look, if you're, if you're available on that day, December 20th, Come on in. I will have sign-up sheets within the uh, different classes that you can sign up for different uh, responsibilities. Uh, we'll have that, those going around next week. Uh, but look for, uh, put that date on your calendar as a way to extend hospitality to our neighbors. Thank you. Beginning in just a few moments. If you are visiting and would like to stay for class, we'd love for you to do that. Not sure where to go, just go to the Welcome Center. Uh, outside of the auditorium, and they'll help you find the class this morning. Let's stand together. We're going to sing Great Are You, Lord, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer. Brother Ken will come and lead us in prayer this morning. Holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise. Oh, holy Lord, most holy Lord, with all of my heart I see. Whoa! 
Let's have a prayer together. Our dear Heavenly Father, help us to be hospitable. Help us to show that we're your children in all that we do, in all that we say, to our neighbors, to our friends, and to those that will be a part of us soon. Thank you so much for the service we've had. Thank you for the blessing that we've enjoyed by being here. And Father, continue to bless us as we go to our classes and continue to study and think about your word and your way of life for us. In Jesus' name, amen.